Okay guys, I've had a bunch of questions over the last few months um, about tea dyeing because I've mentioned that several of my pieces I had tea dyed. So I thought I would make a tutorial video. Um, I've been under the weather for a really long time, pretty well since Avid started daycare. Um, so I haven't really felt like being in front of the camera too much. Um, and I'm sure you can hear my voice is not so great. So um, I'm going to be behind the camera today and we're going to do um, a tutorial. So I'm just going to show you some examples. So this is my finished miracle Grow by Ink Circles. Oh, and I'm sorry, this is terrible for a tutorial, I guess. The lighting here is really bad. Um, this is tea dyed. It's a little darker than it appears. Um, so there we go. And this is my Chatelaine. This came as a um, vintage white linen. And so that's actually pretty true to color. It's a tad darker, not much. Um, yeah, so the tea dyeing actually ends up being pretty close to the color of my cutting board. Sorry, it looks so gross. I promise it's clean. It's just water. Um, anyway, so I dyed my Chatelaine fabric. And yeah, there we go. Um, so this, this Chatelaine fabric is quite a bit lighter than my ink circles. There we go. You can see some of the color difference there. The ink circles is a little bit orangier. Um, and that just has to do with how many tea bags you use and the amount of time. So what I've done is I've put a soup pot. This is a my biggest soup pot on to boil and it's filled about two-thirds of the way full of water. So I put that on to boil. You want that going at a rolling boil. So I can't really do this with one hand, but what I'm going to do next, these are my tea bags. I'm looking for a color similar to what's in these charts. Sorry about the lighting. That's rotten. There we are. Okay, so we've got Shepherd's Bush, the herb garden. This is actually what I'm tea dyeing it for. And this one is the arbor. It's a little bit of haul, I guess. And Dutch Beast. So it's, I'm going for a light tan, similar to my Chatelaine color. And Little Alien School Girl. Now the piece of fabric I have is where? Where did I put it? Over here. So the piece of fabric I have is a white, excuse the mess, my baby's in the take everything out of the, is honeybee eating your snack? Take everything out of the cupboard's face, so we just kind of go with it. Um, okay, so I'm using a white, it's a Zweigart linen, nothing interesting about that. Um, the piece I have is not big enough for my ink circles, I'm pretty sure but it's definitely going to be big enough for my Shepherd's Bush projects. All right, so my very first step after putting, what do you want? My very first step after putting the water on to boil is I'm going to sew, um, just give me one second, I'm gonna get Abbott a cookie. Okay, I'm gonna take a needle and thread and sew these tea bags together. So I've got five, I think, three, four, five, five tea bags and I'm using I didn't plan this out very well, did I? Did I put it away? Okay, I am using, excuse the state of the box, uh, Tetley Orange Pico. Um, so, first disclaimer, I've only ever used this tea. I can't speak to the results of any other brand, either Red Rose or King Cole or any other brand of tea you might get. This is regular Orange Pico tea by Tetley, and that's all I've used so far. Okay, I'm going to string these together, and I'll be right back. Okay, so one of the keys to a really good tea dye is to get your tea at a really rolling boil. So you want to actually make a proper tea. Um, no microwaving, no, no only slightly warm water. You need a nice, strong rolling boil. So I don't know if I can capture that, but anyway, you know what a rolling boil is. Nice and steamy. Um, so my tea bags are all strung together. It just makes it easy to get them out all in one scoop. 
I'm going to put those in and give them a stir. So when I strung them together, they're strung together loosely so there's lots of space in between them. They're not right up against each other because you really want the water to get in between. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the heat. There we go. And we're going to remove we're going to remove the pot from the heat. So you're going to you're going to let your tea steep for I'm going to let it steep for 15 minutes. I normally do 20 minutes, but I want I don't want it to be as dark as I have done. So 15 minutes. We're going to let our tea steep. There we go. Okay, after the tea is steeped, we're going to take the tea bags out, add some salt, and put um, open up our fabric and put that in, but I'll show you that in a little bit. I should say that ideally, what you want to have done is you want your fabric surged before you put it in. It is going to fray. Um, it shouldn't be too, too bad. It's going to look, it's going to look messy. It is going to fray. Um, but right now my sewing machine is not in an ideal place to get at it. So I'm just going to wing it. All right. Um, I don't think there's anything else I need to say right now. Okay. So in 20 minutes, I'll see you back. Abbott, are you helping mommy in the kitchen? You're helping mama in the kitchen? Uh. Yeah. <laughs> He's helping mama make a big mess. Uh -huh. Okay, I wasn't planning on doing this, but um, we have nine minutes left uh, to steep the tea. So I thought I'll just do a little update. Um, so I've been working on all kinds of things. Um, and it's been ages, right? When was my last video? Like two months ago? So I can't keep track, but here we go. I've been working on Afternoon in New York. Um, this is a lot of fun. So I finished Empire State Building and I'm working on the Brownstone. Um, but I ran into a problem. I lost my chart. Uh, I don't know what happened to it. I've looked everywhere I can think of. I can't find it. So this one is on hold until I find my copy of the chart. Um, this is on a blue linen and I believe the color is called Bonnie hmm, Bonnie Bell or Bonnie something rather. I'm not even sure what company that's from. I got it from my LNS. So the last uh, week or so I've been obsessed with this one. So it's a journey of a thousand miles. Begins with a single step I think is the quote. Um, and this is Emma Congdon, and it's from the, hmm, World of Cross-Stitching. I believe it's the June 2016 issue. Correct me if I'm wrong. But this has been a lot of fun. Um, I can't really put it down. So, last time I talked about it, I think I had part of the A, if I talked about it at all, part of the A, and I had part of the sign, and this airplane done, but I've gotten, um... So far, all of this banner and the word of, and uh, finished the A and did this black work or back stitching. Um, yeah, this is beautiful. And this is on a piece of fabric by Silk Weavers. Um, no, I don't re recommend buying from them, but I got this second hand, and I don't know the color, but it's a very light blue. It's not coming across fantastically, but it's a light blue. Um, and I have a finish. So this is a tea dyed piece I did. Oh, oh, the color's adjusting. Okay, anyway. This is a tea dyed piece I did. Um, and this is Around the World in 80 Days by Little House Needleworks. Anyone that follows me on Instagram or um, Instagramania, you've seen my post about this. Um, this is going to be turned into a Christmas gift. I'm not going to say much more about it right now, just in case. But there we go. My sister-in-law is going to help me out with this one. It's going to end up being a little cushion. And this was a lot of fun. I will say, and I've said it several times, the blue here that's charted is a color called 
Hmm. Misty Mountain, I think it is. Something similar to that. Anyway, it actually, when it's stitched, it looks very similar to this. It's a green. This is all one color. Um, it's a variegated green, and I hated it. So I swapped it out because the color on the chart, the picture on the cover of the chart, it definitely looks this color blue. And so I swapped it out for, I believe this is Calypso by Weeks Dye Works. And I think it looks really, really good. If anybody's working on this, uh, be sure to check out the Little House Needleworks website under the Corrections tab. There are a few corrections to this chart. Um, the door is charted incorrectly as well as the windows and the title. So it's pretty important to check that out and I definitely recommend always taking a peek for any corrections before, um, before you get too committed. Guys, I have a bunch of haul. Um, I bought a lot from, uh, from the, uh, Canadian Stash on Low Group, um, this one for 50 cents, and, um, giving some of it away, I'm going to, um, you know, I'm going to stitch some of it, some of it I just couldn't pass up. So, not all of this is new, I'm going to, um, go through and see what I haven't showed before. But here we go, so... We have Sunflower Serenade, <coughs> excuse me, by Blue Ribbon Designs. Um, I'm actually sending this off to Gary because I know he's a fan. There we go. And okay, this is a kit by or a, this is a chart pack by Perman. And I've got it because oh my goodness, because I love these little birds. And there we go. Um, ever since Tracy collected the Told in the Garden charts, I've been kind of obsessed. So there we go. This one is called Under the Orchard. And there. And here we have Autumn Breezes. Um, I'm not sure if I've showed this before or not. A Pirate's Life for Me by Country Cottage Kids. Okay, and I ran out of space on my camera, so I had to go delete a bunch of stuff. So I have the Northern Shield Sampler. And it says Cottage Country. This is definitely a Canadian chart. And this, oh, sorry, this is by Jeanette Douglas. And the Cross Stitch Canada group, it's X Stitch Canada. Um, we're talking about doing a sal in the new year, so I might do this. We'll see. Um, I've got to look at my fabric choices. I'm also doing Stitch from Stash, so I'm not going to be buying a whole lot. <laughs> or that's the plan. I think we've seen this, Lunation. And I got some Prairie Schoolers, Pins and Needles. Um, I think I've shown these. Christmas Tree Farm. Anyway, I've seen Ink Circles. I found this at the thrift shop. I don't love it, but I couldn't leave it. It's a whole kit. Beatrix Potter. Um, Jeremy Fisher. So there we go. And along a country lane, I got it for this. I love the little quilts in the barn. Um, and I also love this one with the mill. So this is by Linda Myers. Um, I got... Oh. Amy's windows. These were all secondhand, and I just couldn't leave them. Okay, thread painting by hmm, Inez and Beck. There we go, a little covered bridge. I don't know, I guess I was going through like a mill covered bridge phase. And there's this one, Glade Creek Grist Mill. And this is a this is in Babcock State Park in Clifftop, West Virginia. And it's designed by Benjamin D. Evans. And I mean, for 50 cents, I couldn't leave it. Okay, and we've seen that. Um, all right, my timer's up. You can hear it beeping. So, here we go. Okay, let's take a look. It's pretty dark. Um, hmm, I'm going to try to hold the camera and do this. Okay. You want to fish out your tea bags, squish them against the side, 
because the good stuff's actually still in the tea bag. Give them a good squish. There we go. Okay. I'm just going to lay that on my counter for now. Okay, let's see. I'm going to put you down here. And the next step is we want to add, I'm just going to double check because I have my instructions written down. We want to add some salt. You need salt in order to set the, the stain in. Okay, so we want a tablespoon of salt. Um, all right. So it's a healthy amount of salt, a tablespoon. Okay, I don't measure, but here we go, about a tablespoon of salt. We're gonna put that in and give it a good stir. All right, now we're gonna take our fabric where did I put it? Way over here. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm opening it all up with one hand. Since having a baby, it's amazing the amount of things you can do with one hand. All right, we're gonna put it in the pot. And I also will add, because I watched, um, Emily C. do some fabric dyeing recently. I want to say she did some coffee dyeing. What I want to say is this does not make a very modeled, what I'm doing does not create a very modeled effect. So it's pretty even toned. There's going to be a little, some slight bits of, you know, um, difference in color, which is what I like. I don't like drastic modeling. So, so there. Okay, I put my fabric in. Give it a good little squish around. Now what we're going to do is we're going to leave it in the pot for about an hour. Now for the darker colors that I showed you, you want to leave it for two hours and stir it up about every 30 minutes. But I want a lighter color, so I'm going to leave it in for one hour and I'm still going to stir it up in half an hour. So, remember, this is not on any heat. It's just steep tea and... Alright, timer... Here we go, 30 minutes. We'll see you back in 30 minutes. Okay, we're a few minutes shy of half an hour, two minutes left, but um, my son's here and he was, he was coloring, kind of. No marks on the page, but he likes to take the crayons out and line them up and put them back in the box. Um, actually, I'm really surprised because they were all out on the floor a minute ago and turn around, he has them all back in the box. He doesn't get that from me. But anyway, um, so, okay, so we're going to take a look. He needs his supper. So, um, so like I said, it's been half an hour. I'm going to give it a stir. So let's take a look at the color. And you want to check your color every once in a while to make sure it's doing what you want. Okay, so there we go. It is already, ooh, some drip dummy. It is already changing to a nice brown. Now, I don't know if you can see this. But I definitely want to comment on this. Um, hmm, let me see if I can get a shot of it. Okay. There we go. Do you see how there's dark, really dark spots? There's like a dark line there and some schmutz. Okay, that happens and you really, you can get rid of it by just kind of, I'm not even showing you there, by just kind of smoothing it out of the way. Um, that will leave a dark line on your fabric. And, you know, it adds some nice texture. You might like that. It's totally up to you. And, let me see. I see this is still pretty warm. Yeah, there's a little bit there in the middle, too. But I don't mind that so much. So I'm really happy with how this is turning out. It's darker than it looks right now. It's actually pretty close to... Mm, no, maybe not that dark. Anyway, now well that's pretty good. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to leave that back in for another half hour. And when we come back, we're going to lightly wring it out. Not under cold water. We're just going to very lightly wring it out. You don't want to twist. 
I'm gonna wring it out and then we're gonna put it in a cool water bath for another half hour. But resetting my timer. Uh, there we go. All right, see you in a bit. Okay guys, it's been a half hour, so we're gonna take the fabric out of the pot. So that was in there an hour total with stirring at the half hour mark. Okay. So let me see, how can I do this? I'm gonna set this down right here. I didn't practice any of this or check out any kind of angles or anything, so we're gonna see how well this works. Okay, so I mentioned you want to lightly wring it out. So, I uh, hope you can see this. Okay, so I'm not really going to, I'm not going to wring it. Like, I'm not twisting it or anything. I'm just squeezing a little bit of the excess water out. You don't want to squeeze out too much. Okay. There we go. And I've prepared already a cold water bath. So it's just another, it's actually the next pot size down and I'm going to submerge um, the fabric so there's the color that's oh it's focusing okay that's pretty accurate it's it's exactly what I wanted so um, okay and oh you can see the end see that did fray it's a little rattier not too bad that's probably the worst right there so all right I am going to just open this up a little bit and we're going to submerge it in the cold water bath and that will set the stain in. There we go. So we're going to leave that in there for about 20 minutes to half an hour and then the next step is that I'm just going to roll it up in a clean towel to let it dry until probably bedtime. So it's going to be, um, what time is it now? It's quarter to six. So um, I'm probably going to unroll it from the towel before bed, maybe around 10 o'clock. Um, who am I kidding? I go to bed earlier than that. I'm going to unroll it around 9 o'clock, 9.30, um, and um, let it air dry after that. So, but once it's out, it should be, it should stay pretty much the same color. It's not going to lighten up a whole lot with it, with drying, just a little bit. Okay, so we'll see you again in about half an hour. Okay, our timer's up. So we're going to take our fabric out of the cold bath. And again, just give it a very light ring. So I'm just lightly squeezing it, oops, in one hand. Um... I'm not sure if you can tell. No. Well, maybe a little in that angle. The water is colored now in the pot. So it did take out a little of the excess um, color from the fabric, and that's good. That's what you want. And it should now, the, all the colors should be set in. Um, okay, so I've got our white towel. I know it's over the stove and that's dangerous, but I checked the burners first. Um, so this is very wet. It's sopping wet. Um, so I'm going to lay it out on the towel and we didn't get too much fraying a little bit here. I'm pretty impressed with that. Okay, there we go. It's laid out on the towel. And now I'm just going to roll it. So. And this will just start the drawing. It gets some of that water out into the towel. I also like to, I like to do this rather than, you could just let it sit out straight away. Um, but the benefit of doing this is that you can see on the towel if there was um, much tea left in the fabric. And if so, you'd probably want to, um, next time, adjust your cool bath time and um, leave it in a bit longer. So there we go. Uh, 
there I have this all rolled up in a, in a towel and I'm just going to leave it here for a few hours and before I go to bed I'm going to unravel it and lay it out flat to dry overnight um, and then it's ready to iron if you like I don't tend to iron it until I'm ready to use it I might give it an iron to show you the color better um, and it's ready to use you don't need to you don't put it in the dryer you don't wash it you don't do anything else um, and we're all set it's okay so after drying um, overnight this is how my tea dyeing turned out so this is against a white towel um, and you can see the color there I'm pretty happy with it and that's fairly true to color it's a tiny bit darker a tiny bit orangier one thing that I don't care for too much on this one you can see on this end I've got some spots I didn't notice those while it was in the pot and rub them out um, but that's okay that'll just add a little character to whatever whatever I use it on alright there's that and if you have any questions please leave them down below um, if you have any suggestions um, for other dyeing I can give it I can try out um, put that down below um, I hope you liked this tutorial and it was helpful if you need anything explained further just ask and thanks for liking and subscribing to my videos I appreciate it hey so you've made it all the way to the end of my first tutorial I hope you liked it um, please leave me some suggestions for the next tutorial I might do because um, I wasn't really sure how that would go but what I wanted to do is I'm almost at a thousand subscribers and I can't believe it and I just want to thank everyone so much for supporting me I don't have a lot of videos up yet and um, it's been a really hectic couple of months with Abbott being in daycare and we've all been sick like crazy and um, anyway thank you so much for sticking with me I really appreciate it and I want to do a little giveaway for a thousand subscribers so I want to send you some things that would look nice on some tea dyed fabric well two that would look good on tea dye and one on a nice color and maybe tea dye who knows um, I want to send you Spooky Sheep by Shepherd's Bush let me zoom in on that for you a really cute little sheep here we go I want to send you Tomcat Alley Ooh, there we go Tomcat Alley by Carriage House Samplings. I wasn't sure if it was designs or samplings. Tomcat Alley. And because it's the holidays, I want to send you Barbara Anna Designs Spreading Joy. There we go. So, to enter this, you have to like and subscribe um, to my channel. Well, you don't have to like the video, just be a subscriber. Um, and I want you to put down below, um, hmm, what can we say? What is your favorite beverage? Let's say, what is your favorite holiday beverage? Is it tea? Mine is probably an eggnog with bourbon at the moment. <laughs> um, tell me what yours is. And also, if you are under 18, you have to make sure you have your parents' permission to give me your address so I can send you um, your prize. So we'll leave this up, um, leave the contest open until, hmm, I'll tally up the respondents on January 1st, and I will pick a winner on January 1st, and I will post the winner as soon as I can. We're going to be traveling over the holidays, so my Wi-Fi is going to be touch and go, but um, I'm going to close it January 1st and pick a winner and uh, let everybody know somehow. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for subscribing and happy holidays.